just about to start the Carolina 500 from Rockingham. The command has been given. The cars are underway. Here is the starting lineup. 37 cars for this race this afternoon. On the pole in car number 27, he qualified at 140.448 miles an hour. Cale Yarborough outside of row number one. The controversial car driven by Bobby Allison, he qualified at 140.394. In the second row on the inside, King Richard Petty in car number 43, outside row number two in car number 11, Daryl Waltrip. In the third row, car 88, Ricky Rudd and Buddy Baker in car number one. In the fourth row, car 47, Harry Gant and 21, Neil Bonnet. In row number five, Terry Labonte in car number 44 and Benny Parsons in 15. Sixth row, Dale Earnhardt in number two and Slick Johnson in 53. Seventh row has Morgan Shepard in car number five and Joe Milliken in 75. Eighth row, Lake Speed in number 66 and Richard Childress in number three. In the ninth row, Dave Marcus in car number 71, along with Donnie Allison in car 12. The tenth row has J.D. McDuffie in car 70 and David Pearson in 16. In the eleventh row, for this afternoon's Carolina 500, Lenny Pond in car 48 and Tim Richmond in 99. Twelfth row, Ronnie Thomas in 25 and Mike Alexander in 37. Row number 13, Buddy Arrington in 67 and car number 42 driven by Kyle Petty. 14th row, Rick Wilson in 62 and Indianapolis veteran Johnny Rutherford in 98. Row number 15, Jimmy Means in 52 and Bobby Wawak in 94. 16th row, Stan Barrett in 22 and Elliot Forbes Robinson in 86. In row number 17, Glenn Jarrett in car 17, along with Jody Ridley in 79. The 18th row consists of Cecil Gordon in 24 and Rick Newsom in number 20 as the cars go down the back stretch. And all along in row number, all alone in row number 17, car number 64, driven by Tommy Gale. That's the starting lineup for this afternoon's race. The cars are at the end of the back stretch and could get the green this time around. 1981 Mazda RX-7 pacing the field with the legendary Buck Baker at the keyboard, two-time national champion, twice the winner of the Southern 500 and one of the real pioneers of this sport. 492 laps to go here on this 1.017 mile racetrack. The turns are banked at 25 and 22 degrees. It's a demanding race. It's a grueling race. Here they come off of the fourth turn and the green flag is out. We're underway for the Carolina 500, the Winston Cup Grand National Cars. Into turn number one. They're still running side by side. The first two rows. It's Yarborough on the inside. Outside, Bobby Allison. In row number two, Richard Petty. And right alongside him is Daryl Waltrip in number 11. Now as the cars move through turn number three, they begin to fi file into a single file order off of turn number four. This will complete lap number one, and it's Cale Yarborough leading. Bobby Allison running in second position, and Richard Petty in third. The cars at this point staying low on the racetrack. The slick part we talked about earlier was upstairs in the bank of the groove. So they're staying low on the racetrack. Cale Yarborough, the man who won both races here just one season ago at Rockingham, sets the pace here. Yarborough moves that car low in turn number three, now on to turn number four. The track is not an oval shape, but here along the main grandstand, it's shaped like a D. There is no straightaway here in front of the grandstand, so uh, we will be referring to no front stretch here, but rather a front uh, straightaway. 27, Cale Yarborough now in the back stretch in turn number three, and Richard Petty moves up to challenge for second and goes into second place. Yarborough has the lead, but now Richard Petty has moved into second position. Also a change for third position as we see Daryl Waltrip move into third. Bobby Allison drops back to fourth. It's Buddy Baker running in fifth position as we have completed three laps here this afternoon of this 492 lap race. Now the cars go down the back stretch and it's still Hale Yarborough stretching out the lead just a little bit on Richard Petty. The real battle here is for second place as you can see Daryl Waltrip right on the back bumper of Richard Petty as they complete lap number four. It is still Bobby Allison running in fourth position. Buddy Baker is running in fifth and sixth now is Ricky Rudd in car number 88. This is a kind of a race where again you might say to yourself 
let's pace just a bit. There are 492 laps to go, and it's very grueling as far as the drivers are concerned. It is a physically demanding track. I guess in the order of races around the Winston Cup circuit, maybe the third most demanding behind that of Bristol, Tennessee, and Dover Downs International Raceway. But again, as we've seen time and time again in the Winston Cup circuit, you have to run all out and make a move as quickly as you can because there's really no wrestling. And if you see the cars work their way down the back straightaway up to turns number three and four, where there are 25 degrees of banking, it's still Cale Yarborough, Richard Petty still pacing himself and watching from second place. Darrell Waltrip is third. And there were a couple of very competitive drivers that started relatively uh, in the rear in this race. Speaking mainly of Dale Earnhardt, who started in the 11th position in car number two. And also, car number 16, David Pearson, who started in 20th position, will be keeping our eyes on those drivers to see if they can move up through the traffic here in the early stages of this race. David Pearson has now moved up into 14th spot, is on the back straightaway. He moved inside of late speed and picked off another position. Here is Cale Yarborough completing lap number seven here at Rockingham, North Carolina. It's still Richard Petty running in second position and Daryl Waltrip in third. There are the first three cars as we begin to see now some lapping here in the early stages of this race as Cale Yarborough puts a lap already on Rick Newsom in car number 11 as the car went down the back stretch. Your first three positions here in the early stages of the Carolina 500. Cale Yarborough, your leader. This completes lap number eight. Running in second position is Richard Petty in car number 43 and Daryl Waltrip in car number 11. Running in fourth position continues to be Bobby Allison, but there is quite a difference between, quite a lot of racetrack between Daryl Waltrip in third position and Bobby Allison running in fourth. Buddy Baker continues to run in fifth position. Ricky Rudd is in sixth. Running in seventh position now is Neil Bonnet as they come by the front stretch here. And in eighth position would be car number 15, that of course, Benny Parsons. And moving up in the ninth spot is uh, the Dale Earnhardt automobile. Again, he started 11th, now moves up two positions on the afternoon. Let's interject another factor right here, Bob, and it's something that we might be able to refer back to a bit later on this afternoon. After the cloudy start to this day, Mother Nature is now beginning to change the complexion of this racetrack just a bit. And one factor that everybody points to here at Rockingham is the actual physical layout of the racetrack. Where is it on the map? of the United States and how is it pointing and coming off the fourth turn and working down the front straightaway late in the afternoon the drivers should the conditions continue here will be faced by a blinding sun should mother nature continue to try and burn off the haze we have seen here this morning that plus the fact that you alluded to in the opening before this being the sand hill region of North Carolina the sandy infield and the swirling sand can begin to sand blast the uh, automobiles as far as they're continuing uh, through the race the grease in the race track the sand on the windshield and so on there you see Bobby Allison's automobile number 28 to the left of your screen and right behind him is Buddy Baker but Bobby Allison has fallen back a few positions here at the start of the race he started of course in second position and now the car number 28 has fallen back to fourth behind the leader Cale Yarborough second place belonging now to Daryl Waltrip, who has gone around Richard Petty. Petty now running in third position. Your leader continues to be Cale Yarborough in the car number 27. Another thing we should talk about at this point early in the race is pit stops. Naturally, the cars will have to make many pit stops in a 500-mile race. They will, away, of course, wait for some yellow lights, but uh, should we have no yellow lights, they will make approximately five or six pit stops. Here's a battle now between car number 11, driven by or car number one, rather, driven by Buddy Baker and the 88 of Ricky Rudd as they battle in the pack. And neither one of those drivers, Baker or Rudd, has had the success of a victory here at the North Carolina Motor Speedway, uh, be it in this event, the Carolina 500, or the fourth event, the American 500. So those two cars are certainly uh, two that have to be reckoned with throughout the afternoon as the field again sweeps by the start-finish line. And you see again the lead automobile there is Cale Yarborough closing in on Buddy Arrington out of Martinsville, Virginia. And after a while, the slower cars obviously to the inside and there you see Yarbrough and Waltrip will make a move to the outside of race traffic the slower cars normally move inside to let the leaders go by in the safety of the outside and almost a bit for the lead Bob. now Darrell Waltrip moves to the inside here as the cars come off of the fourth turn here on the front stretch it is Yarbrough to the outside in 27 right behind him Darrell Waltrip and number 11 Yarbrough is able to hold him off they are continuing to lap some of the slower vehicles a lap being put on Lenny Pond in car number 48 now Yarborough stretches it out just a little bit as they go down the back stretch and Darrell Waltrip settles in for second position. 
Richard Petty continues to run in third here at this time. Bobby Allison is running in fourth position, and Buddy Baker is running in fifth. We have trouble in one. One car goes spinning up against the wall. It's going to be Johnny Rutherford, Lone Star JR, as he spins off the banking, and the leader's now closing in on him. They'll stay low on the racetrack. Johnny Rutherford, a veteran in the Indianapolis 500 competitor, driving as many NASCAR races as he can this year. And of course, Bob, these cars will continue to race back to the start-finish line under Winston Cup Grand National rules, so they are still uh, racing for the leadership. And here they come off the fourth turn. Now they will receive the yellow flag, and it's still going to be Cale Yarborough holding the lead here as the cars slow down under yellow. Johnny Rutherford yesterday in practice had a spin over in just about the same area of the racetrack that he spun uh, just a few seconds ago. Into the pit area is Neil Bonnet for an early pit stop. Perhaps Ned Jarrett is in a location to see what's going on down there. Come in and change the right side power. As Bonnie came down pit road, he was pointing to the left front. They made a chassis adjustment on the car, hoping to get it to stick in the corners a little better. Neil Bonnet back out on the racetrack now in car number 21. There is your leader, Cale Yarborough. We have completed 16 laps, and the lead has been held at this point by Cale Yarborough all the way. Darrell Waltrip, a number 11, is running in second position. We are yellow, though, because of a spin involving Johnny Rutherford. While we're under yellow, we'll take this break and be back for more of the Carolina 500. The signal has been given now that the cars will receive the green flag next time around. Let's run down the top 10 at this point. We've completed 24 laps. The leader there is Cale Yarborough in 27. Running in second position is Darrell Waltrip. Third is Richard Petty. Fourth, Bobby Allison. Fifth, Buddy Baker. Sixth is Ricky Rudd. Seventh, Benny Parsons. Eighth is Dale Earnhardt. Ninth is David Pearson, who has moved up from the 20th starting position, so he's moved up 11 spots at this point. Running in 10th is Terry Labonte. We are under the yellow at this time because of a spin involving Johnny Rutherford in the first turn. He is back out there in competition, and Neil Bonnet in car number 21 made two pit stops during this yellow flag situation. So we're expecting a green now as the cars come down here on the front stretch. You can see that the cars that are in contention are on the high side of the racetrack. The slower vehicles are to the inside. Here is the green flag once again, and we're back to racing. And David Pearson makes a quick move, dashing to the inside, and he'll pick up a couple of spots on the restart. Well, Pearson started, as we indicated, in 20th position. Cars motor down the back stretch. It's a four-car car race at this point with Cale Yarborough leading the way as they come off of the fourth turn onto the front stretch here. Cale Yarborough. A great speed shot as we see the cars rifling themselves off turn number four. We're also watching while you see the leaders the progression of Neil Bonnet who has made his way rather markedly from the rear of the pack after those two pit stops down to the middle of the pack and he is still on the move in the pure later number 21. There you see the lead battle Cale Yarborough showing the way to Darrell Waltrip as they work turns three and four. Neil Bonnet in for a change of rubber on all four tires, so uh, he is in good shape at this point in that respect, and also, of course, the car filled full of gasoline. Hale Yarborough, your leader, Dell Waldrop running in second position, and Richard Petty is running third in car number 43. Here's a good shot down the back stretch. As you can see, the interval there between the first, second, and third cars, only about a car length between each of them. We've completed 27 laps here in the Carolina 500. Handling so much a factor here in Rockingham, but so too is the driver expertise and much has got to be talked about Cale Yarbrough had a good car last year while driving of course to the Junior Johnson team likewise this year pacing the field for the MC Anderson stables, but you must remember Cale Yarbrough that man who you see is the current leader has the victory both races here last year and of course Cale Yarbrough overall with six victories here at Rockingham so he knows a way around this racetrack and as we mentioned at the start of this broadcast if you do a lot of things right you're bound to win it is a survival of the fittest and you have to have a driver who knows his way around this racetrack average speed of the race unofficially at this point is just over 135 miles an hour slow of course on that yellow that came out when johnny rutherford lost control out in turn number one 
Rutherford, however, is still out there in competition. There are your first four cars here as they come off again. They're turning the track here this afternoon at about 26 seconds. The pole speed was 26.068 seconds, 140.448 by Cale Yarborough, who is the leader at this point. The 17th position at this point is car number 21, Neil Bonnet, the gentleman we talked about just a few minutes ago. He came in for two pit stops during that most recent yellow, but is now trying to move up back through the field. He's going around Lenny Pond on the backstretch. Neil Bonnet, the Purelator, Purelator uh, T-Bird, rather, out of Hueytown, Alabama, and, of course, the Wood Brothers out of Stewart, Virginia. You talk about Neil Bonnet, you're talking about a man who, again, has not picked up a victory here at this racetrack, but as he closes in on Glenn Jarrett, the son of uh, pit correspondent Ned Jarrett, you see Neil Bonnet, after a fine qualifying time, working his way back up after a four-tire pit stop. And Neil Bonnet, of course, one of the most well-liked drivers on the NASCAR Grand National Circuit. The leader continues to be Cale Yarborough in car number 27. No change in the first four positions. It's still Daryl Waltrip running in second. Richard Penny is now running in third position. And Bobby Allison in 28 runs fourth. In fifth, continuing to be Buddy Baker in that red number one car, an Oldsmobile. You see the panoramic view here at uh, Rockingham, North Carolina, and what is a jam-packed racing facility here this afternoon. And everybody's seeing a dandy battle. There it is for the lead as Cale Yarbrough and Darrell Waltrip still work their way earlier around traffic, now with some clear sailing off the banking of turn number two and down the back straightaway. So the first two positions, Yarborough and Waltrip running right together on the racetrack. Then a little bit of distance before we pick up the third place car, Richard Petty, and the fourth place car of Bobby Allison. The race was delayed about 10 minutes here this afternoon because of a traffic jam. Well over 40,000 people are gathered here in Rockingham, North Carolina for this Carolina 500 mile race. About this race, you look back in the record books over the years, and never has a race here been uh, halted short of the uh, expected 500 miles. Uh, they've always managed to get the events here in Rockingham, and of course, a great racing facility. The people who come here have uh, really been used to some outstanding racing again because of the quantity of the racetrack. The Speedway itself is not a forgiving racetrack, uh, such as a Michigan, for instance, where the track is wide enough, so should there be a problem, one can correct itself. You only see exciting racing here at Rockingham, and again, this jam-packed house, a testimony to that. We had indicated that we had a few sprinkles early in the morning here, but now the sky is beginning to clear away. There's a lot of breaks in the clouds, and we see the sunshine occasionally. Let's hope that we can complete this entire distance here this afternoon. For your first two cars continuing to move through traffic here at Rockingham, it is Daryl Waltrip now moving right up on the back over of Cale Yarborough. A lap being put on car number 24, driven by Cecil Gordon. Around him nicely now into turn number three. You can see they use the lower groove in turns three and four, then come off high at turn number four and onto the front stretch here, passing under the start finish line and in front of the grandstand, the main grandstand here just below us. There is, of course, other grandstands on the back straightaway. Cale Yarborough and Daryl Waltrip one two at the conclusion of 27 laps. Make that 37 laps. When you talk about the racetrack here, as uh, many racetracks you see around the Winston Cup circuit, you alluded to the cars as we see right there, barring the instance when you have to go around traffic as Waltrip there goes around Tommy Gale. You see the groove, though, the racing groove, move up the racetrack throughout the afternoon. And, of course, when you talk about 492 laps here today, uh, it is still quite early when we're 38 laps and change into the event. But, uh, again, there are so many stories that will be uh, developing throughout this afternoon, the complexion of the cars, you talk, as you and I talked over dinner last night, Bob, the fact that it's almost uh, remarkable to think that a piece of machinery as complex as this forget the uh, extreme maneuverability and all that has to go in. It's amazing that there aren't more attrition rate factors than you see in a 500-mile race, and that right there, uh, a great knock for the uh, crew chiefs, the builders, those guys who oftentimes don't get as many of the headlines and the highlights as others would think they should, have uh, really taken the back seat but done the job and made sure that these cars are competitive and are built to, to withstand what is at best a four and a half hour event here at Rockingham. Well, looking over the event here last year, the Carolina 500, I believe I counted 17 cars out of 38 that finished this race. So uh, there isn't all that much attrition here at this particular racetrack, although it is a very demanding one and very grueling for the drivers. Well, we've completed now 40 laps 
And Cale Yarborough continues to lead here with Daryl Waldrop running in second position. And Richard Petty in third. Bobby Ellis in fourth. Buddy Baker running in fifth position. Last year, Cale Yarborough won this event. Richard Petty finished in second position, about three seconds behind Yarborough. Dale Earnhardt finished in third. Daryl Waldrop was fourth. Donnie Allison fifth. Neil Bunn at sixth. Bobby Allison seventh. Harry Gant finished in eighth position. Dave Marcus ninth. And Terry Labonte finished in tenth position a year ago. Well, we have a battle shaping up here for sixth, seventh, and eighth positions. As we watch the cars come down through here, it involves Ricky Rudd, also car number 16, driven by David Pearson, and the defending Winston Cup champion, Dale Earnhardt. You talked about those drivers, of course. You've got the younger breed, the defending champion, and a youngster, Dale Earnhardt. Ricky Rudd, who has an outstanding situation. And as you see them lined up right there with Rudd leading Pearson, with Earnhardt running right behind him, you see them trying to dice for positions. This is six, seven, and eighth on the line right now. And you've got the cunning of a David Pearson. What is he going to do? Rest assured, he is not going to show his full hand 43 or 44 laps into a 492 lap event. Yet it is enough to kind of test the other drivers and even at this early stage let him know that he's there Ricky Rudd maybe not a dark horse give him good equipment and he has shown so very well they qualified second at Charlotte last year under uh, the watchful eyes of many many surprised observers at the Charlotte Motor Speedway and of course we've all seen what Earnhardt and David Pearson have done so uh, those three are going to watch uh, themselves and watch everybody else and it's going to be a fine battle throughout the afternoon well you go both so accustomed to seeing the cars through the years. Number 88 for many years, driven, of course, by Darrell Waltrip, but Ricky Rudd taking over that ride here this year and doing a fine job, at least at this point, in the Carolina 500. The leader continues to be Cale Yarborough. There he is in turn number one, going around a slower car, Dave Marcus, in number 71. Yarborough leading at this point at the of 44 laps. As we mentioned a few minutes ago, the defending national champion in this division, the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, is Dale Earnhardt. And Earnhardt was a very consistent runner last year on the circuit. He is in his hometown, is in Connecticut, North Carolina. He is single and uh, was born in 1951. He'll be 30 years of age in uh, just a few days, as a matter of fact. There we see Cale Yarborough. And again, then the jousting continues. Ricky Rudd being a passed by both David Pearson and Dale Earnhardt as that battle for sixth, seventh, and eighth continues uh, out of our screen right now. Let's throw another uh, factor into that. We'll see David Pearson. You'll see Dale Earnhardt right there behind him in the Wrangler jeans machine. You see Ricky Rudd. Those three guys, all Rookie of the Years in their uh, respective first seasons on the Winston Cup Tour. Uh, 77 for Ricky Rudd. Back in 1960, it was David Pearson driving the number 16. He was Rookie of the Year. And back in 1979, Dale Earnhardt was the Rookie of the Year. So that is a story of guys who have taken their first year's experience and have really uh, built it into some outstanding careers. And that's another race within this race that we'll be talking about, Bob, this afternoon because as we uh, look at the field, you have got uh, seven champion Fight Club Rookie of the Year candidates entered in today's Carolina 500 with that uh, prestigious award, at least the battle for that prestigious award, currently being led by Tim Richmond, who has a four-point bulge over Elliott Ford Robinson, and of course, for the folks who are aficionados of racing, you see Tim Richmond as a former Rookie of the Year in Indianapolis. And a good battle for second place shaping up here between Richard Petty and Darrell Waltrip, and it's going to be Richard Petty moving in into second position now. Waltrip will move back into third. And a nice pass here on the front stretch as Richard Petty managed to get around Daryl Waltrip. You see the battle there with uh, Dale Earnhardt and David Pearson as they work their way through turns number three and four in Earnhardt. That number two Wrangler jeans machine showing the spot over David Pearson. And of course that battle for second and third place that we were talking about before. Richard Petty trying to and eventually uh, close in and around Dale Earnhardt. So your leader continues to be Cale Yarborough. Waltrip going second. Richard Petty was showing as your third place automobile. And here is the second, third, and fourth place cars now as Richard Petty has run around Daryl Waltrip. Waltrip in third position and also right in the battle is car number 28 driven by Bobby Allison. Allison moves to the inside of Waltrip, tries to get around, cannot do it. Waltrip to the inside, rather Waltrip to the outside of Bobby Allison, but Allison will have to settle back into 
fourth position. Again, you see coming up on race traffic there. That was Elliott Ford Robinson of the number 86 car, currently second in the Rookie of the Year chase. And Bobby Allison had to tuck himself in. And we talked before about Bobby Allison. Well, I guess the folks who have a sentimental spot or are archivists as far as the kind of cars that we've seen campaign. This, of course, the last race for the Pontiac Le Mans in the current configuration that we see right now because there'll be some vast changes made, especially on the rear spoiler, which will be cut down almost in half in time for the next super speedway race in Atlanta. This is your leader, Cale Yarborough, coming by here completing lap number 52. Yarborough in first position. Running second is Richard Petty. Now running in third position is Bobby Allison. In 28, he has gotten around Darrell Waltrip in number 11. Waltrip is showing as the fourth place car now. And still in fifth is Buddy Baker. Running in sixth position would be Dale Earnhardt. And seventh, I believe, would be number 16, David Pearson. Again, 52 laps have been completed there. There is the conclusion of lap number 53, with Yarborough continuing to show the way. We saw there earlier that last traffic we were showing about Cale Yarbrough and his fine qualifying speed in this event last year. Not to be confused with the fact that Darrell Walton sat on the pole. Cale Yarbrough's outstanding qualifying run came on the second day of qualifying, where, of course, whoever does what on that second day cannot start ahead of the first 20 of qualifying on the first day of racing. So, Cale Yarbrough last year, 139.905 qualifying, couldn't do better than a 21st starting position because it came on the second day of qualification. We're watching uh, out on the racetrack while uh, we watch here on the screen, Cale Yarbrough, the progress of Neil Bond in 21. Neil, as we indicated earlier, made two pit stops during our first yellow flag situation to spin by Johnny Rutherford. And he is moving up nicely now through traffic. Yarbrough continues to lead here as we've concluded 55 laps and the average speed of the race is now shown as right around 113 miles an hour. We talked about the rookie of the year a little bit earlier, and the defending rookie of the year is Jody Ridley, who took home the honors last year. Ridley starting this afternoon in car number 79, and as you indicated, there are seven candidates for rookie of the year on the Winston Grand National Series this year. And of course, the champion Spark Plug Corporation sponsoring the Rookie of the Year Challenge, won by Jody Ridley last year. And when you talk about rookies, people oftentimes envision a man of 20 or 21 or 22 years of age. And of course, uh, when you take a look at what goes on this year, it can really be anything but the truth. You've got guys battling for Rookie of the Year honors at 38, 37, 36 years old. And of course, Jody Ridley last year was uh, 38 years old upon winning the Rookie of the Year campaign. So these are guys who are rookies as far as the Winston Cup Grand National Tour is concerned, but in no way are they strangers to a racing facility. Dale Yarborough is your leader here in car number 27. We have a battle for fifth position shaping up here between Buddy Baker and Dale Earnhardt. Baker with the advantage right now in the red car number one. That is an Oldsmobile and Earnhardt in the number two Pontiac. Here they are off of the fourth turn onto this front stretch here. This is the battle for fifth position between Buddy Baker and Dale Earnhardt in the car number two. Now you talked about some hard chargers right there. Dale Earnhardt, of course, has been known to use up every inch of real estate available to him. And Buddy Baker, uh, he's a kind of a guy who will not give anybody an inch either. So uh, two guys who are really suited for one another. They're going to be out there and do an outstanding battle as we see Baker still leading Earnhardt. 59 laps have been completed here. Buddy Baker is running in fifth position with Dale Earnhardt in sixth. In front of them, your leader continues to be Cale Yarborough, Richard Petty in second, Bobby Allison third, fourth place, Darrell Waltrip, and then the number one of Buddy Baker. Another lap car there being passed on the uh, uh, main stretch here as they go into turn number one. Only one yellow flag at this point, and that would be the spin by Johnny Rutherford. Pretty good battle for the lead right there as Richard Petty makes a bid on Cale Yarbrough downstairs and Cale shuts the door on Richard Petty. But now midway down the back stretch past the Winston scoreboard, that's the battle for the lead. Up the 25 degree rankings of turn three and four. Yarbrough comes barreling in on Kyle Petty, the son, of course, of Richard Petty. As that battle for the lead tries to split through two slower cars, Rick Wilson going to the inside and Kyle Petty giving some room likewise. Richard Petty, of course, the victor of the Daytona 500 earlier this year, his seventh win at Daytona. He, of course, the all-time leader as far as, as far as victories are concerned in NASCAR. 
Right now, he's running behind Cale Yarborough, and the distance between the two cars now stretches out just a little. A few laps ago, Petty was on the bumper of Cale Yarborough, but now a little bit of distance between Yarborough and Petty. So Yarborough, Petty running one and two with Bobby Allison shown in third position, and now Darrell Walter running in fourth. And that battle for fifth place we saw earlier has stabilized just a bit as Baker now will begin to feel the heat of Earnhardt exiting turn number two. Earnhardt tried to make a move to the inside, but you see some race traffic. There's Baker in the number one on the Wrangler jeans machine of Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt made a bid for that fifth position coming off turn number two, but found himself in a gaggle of race traffic coming off the turn, and he had to tuck back in for some relative security. One car spins on the back straightaway and comes to rest up against the inside retaining wall as your leaders, Yarborough and Richard Petty, go by the skull bandit of Stan Barrett. Stan Barrett, the record holder for the world land speed record, spins coming off turn number two just in front of your leaders, but they got by okay. And again, they will race to the checker, the uh, yellow flag here, and the leaders now see the checkered flag and slow, or the uh, yellow flag and slow down just a little as we're under yellow for the second time. Stan Barrett losing it coming out of turn number two. We see some scuff marks on the retaining wall out there in turn number two. I'm not sure if those are his or not, but uh, I'm pretty sure that he did come in contact with the retaining wall. There is Stan Barrett climbing out of his wrecked race car, which has come to a rest on the inside, and Barrett will undoubtedly be through for the afternoon. This is, of course, a situation where that is along the back pit area. The drivers are pitting on both sides of the super speedway here at Rockingham. That's the back pit, 24 automobile there with Cecil Gordon's car. And Stan Barrett coming away. It was a wild ride for Stan Barrett. Not all that dissimilar to that last lap, last turn in Daytona. There you see him, as you alluded to, the scuff marks on the retaining wall. The car goes to the wall, buys it, and then careens right across. And there you see, right sweeping across the turn came Cale Yarbrough, Richard Petty, and Bobby Allison. So Stan Barrett just did manage to scoot away, and now on pit road, Bob Jenkins. I know Ned Jarrett is there as we see Stan Barrett. It is feeding time at the zoo because many of the leaders, all of the leaders coming in. Well, as you indicated, a lot of uh, pit stop activity here. And uh, Ned, what have you been able to deserve down there during this flurry of pit stops? Everybody taking advantage of this caution period to come in. Most of the front runners are changing four tires, as we see Benny Parsons right now changing all four tires on his car. Neil Body was in, changed all four tires once again, and those that did not stop the last time around are coming in this time. We're under yellow with 66 laps completed. Here is Richard Petty now in car number 43 making a, a pit stop and changing rubber on the left side of that car. This, of course, somewhat of a sentimental day for that Petty team. This is the final day that that crew will be under the baton, if you will, of Dale Inman, cousin uh, to the Richard Petty clan. Inman, of course, leaving following this event to move on as the director of racing operations for the Austin racing team. So Richard Petty a sport that maybe to the casual observer seems kind of impersonal. But in a day like this, uh, when the Inman uh, Petty family affair will be coming to an end after 23 years, Ned, I'm sure there's a good bit of emotion down there. Richard Petty out of the pit area now on the back stretch as Buddy Baker pits on one. So all of the leaders in here for pit stop activity on the 67th lap, our second yellow light of the afternoon, yellow flag situation, and it involves a sp uh, contact with the wall by Stan Barrett out in turn number two. Stan Barrett is okay. We'll be back with more racing activity at the Carolina 500 in a moment. yellow here at the Carolina 500. Let's go down to the pit area. Well, everybody has taken advantage of this caution period to come in for a tire change and any adjustments that they might need. It seems that the cars are handling better than most of the people expected here in the early stages of this event. But making pit stops under the caution is much better than having to make them under the green. So they take this opportunity to come in, make those adjustments that they need, and get back ready for the running. It's a situation where if we have a yellow flag situation, the uh, cars can come in for really two pit stops and change rubber on both sides of the car and not lose any distance. That's true, but of course, 
it's tough on the pit crews and of course when they have to do it on the green but it is just uh, marvelous being able to watch the high speed ballet that we've seen and of course in the pits where it all happens Ned Jarrett. Well standing by with Stan Barrett. Stan what happened over there? He got lost. Did the motor fall Yeah it just did. Uh, I just came over there and lost it. It just felt like something gave way and, a, and I hit the wall. You're okay though? Yeah I'm fine. How about the car? I'm in better shape than the car is. Well, Stan, we're sorry to see you out. Of, we're happy to see you at least falling. Uh, thank you. It was uh, it's going to be a good race. It's kind of fun out there. It's pretty it's, it's pretty slick out there, though. Yeah, but the car had been hailing really well. I'd get a little loose going into the turn and halfway through it, but never come off. And as I was coming out of the turn, boy, I just, get, just gave way, and away I went. Well, here's a fellow that's traveled 739 miles an hour, but he had a little problem here at Rockingham today. Heavy contact with the outside retaining wall in turn number two, but Stan Barrett is okay. Stan from Bishop, California, driving this coal bandit Pontiac here at the Carolina 500, qualified this afternoon at 135.304, good enough for 31st starting position, but he's out of the competition at this point. And of course, Stan Barrett was currently showing in sixth spot as far as the champion spark plug rookie of the year is concerned. He was sandwiched in between Glenn Jarrett and Ronnie Sanders. Sanders not in this event today, so a tough break for that race within a race as far as Stan Barrett is concerned. And now the field getting the one to go indication, as you see right there, the number 88 car tucked in behind that Mazda RX-7 pace car. That, of course, Ricky Rudd as they work to the high side of the number 24 of Cecil Gordon. Again, in this instance, a double file restart. The faster cars to the high side, the slower cars are the lapped automobiles to the inside. And right behind Ricky Rudd, there's a man who we saw at the tail end of the pack just at the same situation a few laps ago. Neil Bonnet in the Wood Brothers Pure Later Automobile and Harry Gant, the Race Hill Farms entry number 47, is tucked right in behind Neil. So some new faces now beginning to rear themselves as we get set for a restart here at Rockingham. The two abreast formation as the cars come down the backstretch. This is something that we have not seen on our previous ESPN Auto Racing telecast. A two abreast start after a yellow flag situation. In the other races that we have seen, they must start single file, but this is a good idea. The faster cars, those in contention, and move to the outside of the racetrack, the slower cars to the inside. When that green comes out, they are sailing in front of them. And the green flag is out once again. We're back to racing here at the Carolina 500 with Ricky Rudd in car number 88, showing the way over car number 21, driven by Neil Bonnet. Donnie Allison had tried to stick the nose of his number 12 in there, and he settled right now for fourth running order as Bonnet tried to make a bit to the lead, but couldn't quite do it there as we saw Neil just peek to the inside. Now again he does, trying to take a bit of a lower line through turns three and four, then does Ricky Rudd. And as Neil Bonnet now peels back into second place, he'll hold down in that second running order. Harry Gant is third, Donnie Allison fourth. Knowing fifth is going to be the Benny Parsons automobile. They're back in turn two. So a change of positions here and during the most recent yellow flag situation as Darrell Waltrip has dropped back now along with Richard Petty and Cale Yarborough, the three drivers who challenged for the lead early. Now the uh, race is for first position between Ricky Rudd in number 88 and Neil Bonnet in 21. Down in front of the main grandstand here, it is still Ricky Rudd showing the way with Bonnet tucked in in second position. We've completed 73 laps of this 400 over 400 lap race, 500 miles on this 1.017 mile racetrack. Now as we get the update, Bob Jenkins from uh, NASCAR timing and scoring, it is number 15, the Melling Tool car of, of uh, Benny Parsons that is being shown officially as the leader. Those cars, the two right there, and the three, or at least the two immediately behind, that's the Harry Gant and Donnie Allison car, are on the tail end of the lead lap. So there you have Ricky Rudd and Neil Bonnet, the tail end of the lead lap. Likewise, Harry Gant and uh, the leader currently showing is a man out of Ellerby, North Carolina. So says uh, NASCAR timing and scoring, that being Benny Parsons. Well, once again, it's very difficult to keep him straight because there are so many cars on the racetrack. And when we do have yellow flag situations and a lot of pit stops are made, it's very difficult to determine who is actually in the lead. And although a car may be running at the front of the pack, as is the case here with Ricky Rudd and Neil Bonnet, both of those cars are not in contention for the lead at this point, but rather the car that is running fifth in the pack at this time, the uh, car number 
15 driven by Benny Parsons. Of course, oftentimes, as you said, on a restart, the field gets shuffled up on the board right now. The scoreboard shows Cale Yarbrough as the leader. So obviously, the timing and scoring folks we checking their computations. I will have an official update for you in that just a moment, though the original word on the restart we received was that Benny Parsons had taken advantage of the lead. In any event, an outstanding battle between two of the younger breeds. There's Neil Bonnet sweeping to the inside of Ricky Rudd. Rudd campaigning those Gatorade colors as off the turn. It's going to be Neil Bonnet taking it downstairs and picks up a position from Ricky Rudd. As the sun comes out here at Rockingham, North Carolina, it is Neil Bonnet going around Ricky Rudd, and now both of those cars moving up on some slower vehicles in turn number three. A bold move there by Neil Bonnet passing as he went into turn number one. It appeared to me as he came off of turn number four, the car got just a little bit squirrely in the back end around just a little. Nevertheless, he was able to get around Ricky Rudd. The car number 27, driven by Cale Yarborough, is being shown at this time on the scoreboard as the leader. Yarborough leading at this point, apparently. Car number 11 is running in second position. That is Daryl Waltrip. In third would be car number 28, driven by Bobby Allison. Fourth is car number two, Dale Earnhardt. And fifth, Richard Petty in car number 43. Those are the standings that are being given to us by timing and scoring from NASCAR. 79 laps completed. The average speed of the race at this point, slowed by two yellow flag situations, 116.5 miles an hour. There you see Cale Yarbrough, Darrell Waltrip in the 11 right behind him. Those cars sweeping past some race traffic, and for the moment here, they've got themselves some sailing. Benny Parsons in the 15 dead ahead. You got a brief glimpse of the black and bronze, number 12 of Donnie Allison. Donnie Allison, of course, along with Bobby Allison and Neil Bonnet making up the membership in the famed Alabama gang. Not to uh, take away anything from Jimmy Means out of Huntsville, Alabama, but those three, the two Allisons and Bonnet, of course, neighbors in Hueytown, Alabama, with Bobby Allison, the leader of the Alabama gang. And they are off of turn number four, and Hale Yarborough continues to maintain the lead here, has two cars in front of him, those two cars in front of him side by side as they went into turn number one. Now perhaps he'll be able to pick them off as he goes down the back stretch. Right behind him is Darrell Walter from number 11. Now Yarborough able to get around one of those slower cars in turn number three. Sets his sights on the other slower car in front of him. Also Darrell Walter is going to be able to get around that slower car as they come by the front stretch here. Hale Yarborough shown as your leader. Second, Walter up third is Bobby Allison. We're watching some outstanding racing as well for the sixth and seventh positions as David Pearson, remember, he started in 20th, has moved up awfully well, and now he and Buddy Baker have their hands full. But as you see the field now deploying itself up the banking, 25 degrees high off the banking of turns number three and four. Liken that to some of the other racetracks where you see some of the smaller banking lower at that than Pocono or Charlotte or Michigan. And of course, the 31 degree and 33 degree banking of the uh, Alabama International Motor Speedway and of course Daytona at 31 and 36 degrees at the Bristol International Raceway. So these drivers throughout the year throw in a road course event or two in Riverside and these guys you see indeed have to be the well-rounded drivers to wrestle these 3,700 pound cars to do exactly what needs to be done in a particular situation. The first four cars are running relatively close to each other on the racetrack that being Yarborough, Waltrip, Allison, and Richard Petty. Those four cars running now down the backstretch are in certainly contention for the lead, each of them. 83 laps completed here at Rockingham, North Carolina in the Carolina 500. Two veteran Indianapolis 500 competitors, at least one veteran Indy 500 competitor, Johnny Rutherford, in competition with the NASCAR boys here in North Carolina this afternoon. Rutherford brought out our first yellow light earlier when he lost control over in turn number one. The other Indy 500 driver is Tim Richmond, who is also driving as many NASCAR races as he possibly can this year. Tim Richmond driving car number 99 here this afternoon started in 23rd position and is still out there in competition. He of course the rookie of the year at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway last year 
and uh, did exceptionally well in the car that he was driving. In fact, turned the fastest unofficial lap of the month at Indy last May. Talking about Indianapolis and talking about some Ironman driving, how about Donnie Allison, another rookie of the year in Indianapolis back in 1970, those 500 grueling miles at the Brickyard, and then shows up the next day at the Charlotte Motor Speedway and wins NASCAR's World 600. So you talk about a man, rookie of the year, one day in Indianapolis, wins the World 600 the next day, Donnie Allison. Let's run down the standings now. Cale Yarborough in 27 is shown as your leader. Darrell Waltrip running in second position. Donnie Allen, rather Bobby Allison is third. Running in fourth, Dale Earnhardt. Fifth is Richard Petty. Sixth is Buddy Baker. Seventh is Terry Labarty. Eighth is Carnival 16, David Peterson. Ninth would be car number 66, driven by Lake Speed. And 10th, car number 75, Joe Milliken. Those are the unofficial standings given to us by NASCAR timing and score. 87 laps completed here as Cale Yarborough once again sets that car into turn number three. Moves to the outside now to go around a slower car as he comes off of the fourth turn onto the front stretch here. Putting a lap on car number 52, driven by Jimmy Smut Means. And of course, at this point, as you see Yarbrough there working around some race traffic, ahead of him are a couple of cars who are going to try their darndest to remain currently on the lead lap. And those will be the automobiles of Ricky Rudd and Harry Gant. So those two cars who have hooked themselves up together are trying to stay ahead of Cale Yarbrough. On this track, as you see Yarbrough there come barreling in on the Levi Garrett automobile of uh, Johnny Rutherford, this track is deceptive in the respect that you would look at it and not feel the draft would have that much of a factor. But it is, as we see the battle there for second place, it's going to be Darrell Waltrip in the number 11, Bobby Allison the 28, Richard Petty the 43. Three veteran race car drivers right there. And their high side goes Waltrip, opens the door for Bobby Allison. And now it shuts again on Richard Petty, though he's trying to snake his way through. But that's all you need. Open the door for Bobby Allison. And it's history. He'll pick up a position on you. And good racing here for second position as there are four cars battling now for that position. We indicated earlier they were all running in relatively close formation. Now they're right on each other's bumper. Bobby Allison has now moved into third position with Richard Petty running in fourth. Running in fifth position as they come off of the fourth turn would be the number 11 of Darrell Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt now makes a move and goes around Waltrip. So it is Dale Earnhardt moving up another position and Earnhardt doing a fine job here in the early stages as we're nearing the completion of one fourth of this race. And of course, we talk about the fact of the margin on the racetrack beginning to narrow. But indeed, at this point, you have Bobby Allison and Richard Petty hooked up in a two car draft on the gap between themselves and the leader, Cale Yarborough, is beginning to narrow. There you see the draft we were talking about. Benny Parsons is the 15 automobile. But there are Allison and Petty, and there's Yarbrough. And as Cale goes around Rick Dixon, he can look in the rear view mirror. He sees the gap between himself and that second place battle beginning to narrow. There is the battle for second place involving Bobby Allison and Richard Petty as the cars come off of turn number four here and flash by us completing lap number 93. The battle for second involving Bobby Allison in 28 and Richard Petty in 43. The other. The other car there, of course, Benny Parsons now showing us one lap down. That's the controversial car there in the middle of your screen. The number 28 has caused all the commotion. Uh, notice the slant on that back window, and that's the thing that uh, many of the drivers feel is unfair to them. It gives him better aerodynamics, and that car will have to be changed by the next Grand National event. This, of course, not coming all that far on the heels of the action at Daytona. And there you see Richard Petty and Bobby Allison, Benny Parsons as well. And they can uh, harken back just a couple of weeks ago when the names of Allison and Richard Petty were so prominent at the beach, as they say, the Daytona International Motor Speedway. It was outstanding. All the experts, of course, say Bobby Allison, clearly the dominant force in that race. And really, uh, Bobby did very little to dispel any of those pre-race expectations. Yet, of course, as history has proven, it was a shrewd move in the Petty Pitts Dale Infinite Morris Petty, calling for a gasoline stop only, no tires, and Richard Petty went ahead to take the victory in the Daytona 500. But those cars, plus you see Benny Parsons, who now is relegated to a position behind Allison and Petty, all bringing back some pretty good memories of some outstanding racing, as you always seen at Daytona. 
This is the battle for second position in the Carolina 500. Bobby Allison holds second at this point, but Richard Petty is right there challenging for that position. And they have now moved up on the lead car, Cale Yarborough, as Yarborough moves to the outside in turn number three, goes around the number 94, driven by Bob Wawak. Cale. So, the first three cars now are nose to tail. Cale had a bit of a problem not being, he had nobody off which he could draft. And a two-car draft, as we said, will usually, in most instances, track down a car running by its lonesome. And even though this racetrack at first look does not lend itself, at least visually, we want to say, well, the draft is going to be a very major factor here. Well, indeed it is. It is not, of course, a back stretch of 3,400 feet, as you'd see at Talladega, but it is big enough to get the job done, and the draft has really become a factor here this afternoon, sweeping across the start-finish line as you look momentarily from the infield side and now from the grandstand side. You see Tim Richmond in the pitch in the Uno, number 99. As we said before, former Indianapolis Rookie of the Year, Tim Richmond, as your leaders work themselves down the back straightaway into turn number three. Yarbrough now has taken advantage of some race traffic to put about four or five car lanes between himself and Bobby Allison. And Bobby has pulled another five or six ahead of Richard Petty as they work towards turn one. And let us not forget the fourth place car at this point, Dale Earnhardt, who is also right in the thick of things. There is Cale Yarborough, your leader here. Tim Richmond is back out on the racetrack. Tim, a nice young man from Ashland, Ohio. He's trying to gain some experience on the high bank super speedways of NASCAR. And you talk about Tim Richmond, Bob. He won the ARCA 200 race at the Daytona Speedway just a couple of short weeks ago in a car that was driven last year on the Grand National Circuit by Buddy Baker. That was the Haas Ellington prepared ride. And of course, uh, Tim Richmond went ahead and really made a mockery of the field because he is a confident driver. He can get around the high banks well. He can get around the short tracks well. And uh, he is obviously with the equipment as he has on this circuit and as he had at the Arca race in Daytona, a man who has to be reckoned with for seasons to come. He is currently showing as the leader in the champion spark plug rookie of the year battle. One fourth or a little more than one fourth of the race is completed now and this is the battle for the lead. It involves the number 27 driven by Cale Yarborough and the number 28 driven by Bobby Allison. This is the way they started here this afternoon with Yarborough on the pole in first starting position. Bobby Allison alongside. They're still running in that position at this point. Cale Yarborough is running in first position. Richard Petty now moves up to challenge, and here on the main straightaway, a lot of traffic, going. and we see Allison going to the inside right alongside Yarborough. Let's watch him as they go through turn number two. It is going to be Bobby Allison taking the lead away from Cale Yarborough down the back stretch. And using Tim Richmond, Slick Johnson, and J.D. McDuffie as a pick, if we can use a basketball term. It was an open door there for Bobby Allison, and as we saw earlier, when Darrell Waltrip went a bit high in the racetrack, and Allison Pounced on the opportunity. He used Slick Johnson so very well, a driver who was among the leading rookie campaigners last year, entering his first race of this 1981 Winston Cup campaign, but using the pick so very nicely. Bobby Allison, your leader. But again, uh, there's Cale Yarbrough right behind as they go past Tommy Gale of North Huntington, Pennsylvania. So those two cars right there are going to be waging quite a battle as we are now 101 laps into 492 here this afternoon. And Richard Petty there in car number 43 is still right also in the uh, thick of the race as he settles back into third position watching the two leaders in front of him. You know, as we have talked with these drivers throughout the weekend, I think it would be a very satisfying victory for Bobby Allison here this afternoon. As you can well imagine, he is not real pleased that the ruling has come down that that car configuration must be changed. He thinks he will be at a definite disadvantage when the car has to be changed for the next race. He would like to put a victory under his belt here this afternoon before the configuration is altered. Bobby Allison, your leader, as the cars go down the backstretch here with number 27, Cale Yarborough, running in second place. Richard Petty is shown as third. Running in fourth is Dale Earnhardt, and fifth, the car number 11 of Darrell Waltrip. This completes lap number 106. And as we work our way down through 106 laps, we've already seen six official lead changes now with Bobby Allison showing the way. Of course, your leaders to this point, Benny Parsons, Cale Yarborough is led, now Bobby Allison, Terry Labonte shows as a leader for a short while. Likewise, Joe Milliken and Ricky Rudd. So now as we work our way towards lap 107, it is your sixth leader of the afternoon out of Hueytown, Bobby Allison. Allison puts another lap on Lenny Pond in car number 48. 
as Allison now moves into turn number one, uses the low side of the racetrack, and he stretched out the advantage now just a little over Cale Yarborough. Bobby Allison with the Kurt Lund car number 28, a black and silver automobile, showed as the leader here at the end of 107 laps. The record here as far as the speediest 500 miles of the North Carolina Motor Speedway is held by our current leader Bobby Allison back in 1979 in this very event. He toured at 121 and changed 121.792 for the 500 miles. At this point as uh, we sit 114.5 miles per hour on the average. Still a bit shy of the existing record but again very early in the event here this afternoon. We've already had two caution flags if you're just joining us along the way. Johnny Rutherford spinning off turns number one and two on the 15th lap and then Stan Barrett spinning off the second turn on lap 65. Here are the first three cars Allison Yarborough and Richard Petty running in that order down the back stretch. There are two 500 mile races that are held here each year the Carolina 500 today later in the year they will run the American 500 here as we mentioned the defending champion of this race is Cale Yarborough who started from the pole position last year and went on to win in the American 500 last year Yarborough also the winner in 1979 the winner of this race was Bobby Allison and in 78 the winner was David Pearson so we have five former champions in the competition here this afternoon and one of them Hale Yarborough has gotten around Bobby Allison once again and is leading as they come by us here to conclude lap number 110. It is Hale Yarborough now in the lead with Allison running in second position and Richard Petty third. One retiree just seconds earlier and it's breaking up part of the Alabama gang as Donnie Allison had less than I'm sure a satisfying qualifying run. He started the event 18th while well, Donnie and the five racers corporation Oldsmobile has just turned left onto the garage area and at least for this moment until a further word out of the race. Yarborough with about a one car length advantage on Bobby Allison with about a four or five car length advantage over Richard Petty so really the battle is for first position between Yarborough and Allison cars go around a slower vehicle on the racetrack that number 94 driven by Bobby Wawa now in turn number three again they use the low groove in turn number three and come up high the car drifts toward the outside of the racetrack up near the retaining wall as they come down here in front of us and again it is not a straightaway here in front of us but rather a d-shaped type of oval and uh, so there is no actual front straightaway. One of the faster cars on the racetrack right now is Dale Earnhardt as he has set himself to sailing down the back straightaway up the banking of turn number three and four. And as you see your leader, and there's Earnhardt. Dale has really been picking off positions and he is not all that far behind Richard Petty who is your third place runner. As you see the interval right there, there's Petty and the leaders directly in front of him. And Dale Earnhardt now low on the racetrack at turns number one and two. So Earnhardt, duly North Carolina, Carolina driver. We said it before. He will use every every resource available. Uses every inch of real estate. And there are your three leaders as they work their way off the banking of turn four. Dale Earnhardt, last year's champion. There's a big meeting in only his second year of competition on the Winston Grand National Circuit. Heck of a battle for a lead right there as Yarbrough again shuts the door on Bobby Allison as we check in with former two-time Winston Cup Grand National champion Ben Jarrett on pit road. Donnie Allison, Donnie Allison is the latest retiree. Donnie, what went wrong? I don't know either. I believe the oil pan split or something. I don't know. It's like I got a real bad oil leak up around the engine. Donnie, things getting ready to go right for you here from the Legitimate I couldn't hear you, Dad. I said things really didn't go right for you all week here. No, but the car was pretty well. You know, we, we got behind on that first pit stop. We got caught in the pits, but, you know, I can run as fast as anybody wants in iron, you know, once it got even out. And, you know, but maybe we'll get it straight out. Well, so, Donnie will go out and watch his brother Bobby now and see if they can take some more of the money back to Jaytown, Alabama. Well, Bobby Allison, his brother, now running in second position at that at this time behind the number 27 of Cale Yarborough, still running in third place, is Richard Petty. 117 laps have been completed here. The average speed of the race at this point, 114.5 miles an hour. You know, it's too bad about Donnie Allison. He, of course, had his first major win here at Rockingham, won the Carolina 500 back in 1968 when he was driving a Ford. So it's tough to see a driver who has had some successes here have to fall by the wayside early. 
Your leaders you see right there caught up again behind some slower race traffic, but Cale Yarbrough will lead the parade down the back straightaway. There's Yarbrough to the high side of Tommy Gale. Right behind in the 28 is Bobby Allison. Richard Petty in the 43 just outside to the right corner of your screen. And as we talked about before, Dale Earnhardt also uh, closing up to make it a tight four-car battle. And we continue to run under green here, and we'll be back with more competition from the Carolina 500 in just a moment. Bob Jenkins along with Eli Gold back at the Carolina 500. Dale Earnhardt, you can see, with the structural damage on that car at the left front of it. He was involved in an incident in turn number two as he was about to go around Richard Petty on the high side, lost it, spun up into the outside wall and did some damage to the left front of that race car. But he came into the pit area. The sheet metal was pulled away from the tires. The tires were changed. The fuel was put into the car. And Dale Earnhardt, the defending champion of the Winston Cup Series, is back out there in competition. Your leader will be shown as Harry Gant in car number 47. Cale Yarborough is running in second position with Bobby Allison third. Richard Petty is fourth. And David Pearson running in fifth position. Harry Gant, he is a driver out of Taylorsville, North Carolina. Though the race car, the race home farms entry, is maintained out of the New England area, out of the state of Connecticut by Bob Johnson. And Harry Gant has had some success here. His best finish in a Winston Cup race was second. He did it three times including the American 500 just one year ago. That's the fall event here in October. So Harry Gant, your leader, we talked about him earlier. He likes to run high on the racetrack. Sometimes it suits him. And right behind him, he's got company with Cale Yarborough, Bobby Allison, Richard Petty, and David Pearson now in fifth. It's a two abreast start here as the crowd rises to its feet and the green flag falls once again. Running one, two, three, the faster cars to the outside of the racetrack and the slower cars to the inside. Harry Gant at car number 47, staving off the challenge right now of Cale Yarborough. But Yarborough appears to have the faster car as they flash down the back stretch, and Cale Yarborough pulls to the inside of Harry Gant. Now going into turn number three, it's Cale Yarborough with the line on the inside of the racetrack, and Yarborough resumes the lead. And now the complete lap number 188. Cale Yarborough is your leader. Gant continues to run in second position with Bobby Allison third, and the King Richard Penny running in fourth position. You see as the camera pans through the infield and follows your leader and you see the back straight away. There is not a seat to be had here, Bob Jenkins, and that has, of course, been confirmed by the racetrack. This is the largest crowd to ever view a Winston Cup Grand National race here at this facility. Better than 45,000 fans in the grandstand area alone. There is not a single seat. The hottest ticket in Carolina here this afternoon. And these people being treated to a dandy because behind Yarborough, there are three cars in a flying wedge battling for second place. Bobby Allison, Richard Petty, Harry Gant. In comes D David Pearson along with Neil Bonnet. So behind Cale Yarbrough, five cars begin to bar themselves down and try and take a piece of the lead. Here they are off of turn number four. Yarbrough continuing to hold the lead here and the battle is for second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth position. It is Richard Petty to the inside and Bobby Allison to the outside there on the left-hand side of your screen as Richard Petty manages to get around Bobby Allison to assume second position. Allison now third and challenging on the inside would be Pearson in car number 16. So some good racing going on here in the middle stages of this event at Rockingham. It is Petty running in second position. Allison now third and running fourth would be the car number 16 of David Pearson. Those cars continue to shuffle themselves around. You see Richard Petty right there. He has started 841 races now in his uh, Winston Cup Grand National career. Number 841 is today. And he tries to bust his way free from those three cars you see trailing him. Bobby Allison along with David Pearson and Neil Bonnet. At this point, Richard Petty may be saying that Cale Yarbrough is scooting away a bit too much for comfort. Meanwhile, behind Cale Yarbrough again, the battle for third place. Likewise, a battle further back. As all around the racetrack right now cars begin to shuffle the positions and oftentimes you will see after a restart 193 laps now into the event 
And it is Cale Yarborough, your leader, Richard Petty, running in second position. And Petty was seriously injured in a rather spectacular accident at Pocono International Raceway last year and had to miss several races. He already has a victory under his belt in 1981, having won the Daytona 500-mile race. The second-place car now is Bobby Allison. Third would be David Pearson. And the... Also, the fourth position car there in the battle. A good view to see the interval on the racetrack right now behind Cale Garbrough as he sweeps behind and beneath the cameras here. Also to note, Neil Bonnet made a nice move on David Pearson and picked up fourth spot in the running order. So as they work their way across the start-finish line now, it is going to be your leader, Cale Yarbrough, as you see now, staying relatively low on the racetrack. The groove has not moved up appreciably. Your second-place runner is Richard Petty as we have one car working his way down the backing or banking of turn number two and sweeping down the back straightaway. So cars begin again to pit on the front and the back stretch. We were uh, in a position to talk to the leader of this race, Cale Yarborough, a couple of days ago. Let's hear what Cale had to say before the start of the race. Well, I think the main thing you have to do here is uh, to be able to run strong towards the end. You know, the race is 500 miles on a mile racetrack, and uh, it gets mighty tiresome down towards the end of the race. And I think if uh, you can be physically strong towards the end, that you, uh, you'll probably have a better chance than anybody else. Dale Yarborough in turn number three on the low side of the racetrack. The battle in second and third position is between Richard Petty and Bobby Allison. Richard to the high side of the racetrack as they come down to complete lap number 197. Petty with the second place position right now with Bobby Allison right behind and challenging in fourth position to the inside is Neil Bonnet in car number 21. Richard Petty seems to be relatively strong right now. He works his way around the turn 12. He too staying low on the racetrack. Third place, Neil Bonnet downstairs on Bobby Allison. There you see your third place battle. Uh, Neil Bonnet wins that one, so he takes third spot away from Bobby Allison. His Huey Town neighbor watching still in arrears as David Pearson who shows in fifth spot this afternoon. There's a panoramic view of a jam-packed Winston Cup racetrack here in Rockingham, North Carolina. The North Carolina Motor Speedway is second place runner Richard Petty still sets sail. He negotiates his way through traffic and still tries to chase down your leader. And the leader, of course, Cale Yarborough here on the front stretch. Yarborough passing a slower car, the number 52, driven by Jimmy Smutnees in turn number one. Yarborough has pretty much dominated this race here this afternoon to this point. He started from the pole position at a speed of 140.448 miles an hour. Richard Petty continuing to run in second position. And Kyle Petty, also in car number 42, is still out there in competition here this afternoon. Petty in second, Bonnet shown in third position with Bobby Allison running fourth. David Pearson in car number 16 is running in fifth position at this time. You talk about Cale Yarbrough as we see him right there. It's almost uh, like reading an honor roll. What has happened in Winston Cup racing over the years? Among the accomplishments, the only four-time winner of that demanding Southern 500 in Darlington. He has won a record seven of ten short track races back in 1976. He has won 36 super speedway wins. That puts him third on the all-time list. And if we have the time, we can just go on and on and on. But there you see Dale Earnhardt working his way, tucking in behind Buddy Baker. Both will try and work to the high side in that elegantly splattered car of number 66, the Lake Speed entry, the former national go-kart champion, Lake Speed, out of Jackson, Mississippi. Now, as they work up the high side of turn number three, there's Buddy Baker. Right behind him, Dale Earnhardt, the Wrangler Gene Machine. Benny Parsons has hitched himself in to get the free ride as well. This is the battle for 10th position on the racetrack with Buddy Baker in car number one holding down 10th at this point. Dale Earnhardt in number two settles in 11th position. And then the number 15 of Benny Parsons running in 12th position. One car slowing on the back straightaway. That's going to be Benny Parsons. And we have and a we have spin. Par we have a spin in turn number three to the inside of the racetrack. The car got off of the racetrack, I believe, to the inside. It involves Lake car speed. number 66, Lake Speed, whom we mentioned just a few seconds ago. The yellow is out. And we were also talking about Benny Parsons. As you see, Ernie Moore, again, one of the busier men this afternoon. This is caution period number five as Lake Speed. 
speed in the Speed Racing Enterprises car begins to limp away and back towards pit road. So Lake Speed, as a matter of fact, will remain on the speedway. As you see your leader, Cale Yarbrough, now touring the speedway with 204 laps in arrears to the 492 that will make up the afternoon's activities. Lake Speed bringing out the caution flag. And again, we saw Benny Parsons who began to slow rather noticeably on the back stretch, obviously to try and keep himself out of the problems that Lake Speed was encountering. Lake Speed is making his home in Jackson, Mississippi, and we have a replay of that incident which occurred right at the end of the back stretch as the car came off of uh, turn number two in the back stretch. You can see Speed up high there on the racetrack and may have been bumped and there was a car right there behind him that uh, did a terrific job of of avoiding him just uh, great driving there and, and avoiding that spinning Lake Speed car. Ricky Rudd was in that number 88 the Gatorade color car as you see Lake Speed now look to sweep away and somehow does not buy the inside retaining wall. He just tries to right the automobile. You see Benny Parsons went by likewise Morgan Shepard and the rest of the field. Benny Parsons was directly behind Lake Speed when Speed began the spin as we see action on pit road now as the David F crew begins to service and finishes quickly on Cale Yarbrough. Benny Parsons was right behind Lake Speed and of course uh, the reason we talked about Benny having slowed off the pace but an outstanding piece of driving by Ricky Rudd to stay out of harm's way. Well, Lake Speed as you mentioned is a former world go-karting champion back in 1978. He drove in 19 Grand National races last year finished six of them in the as the top rookie in the race. He finished eighth at Carlington, eighth at Talladega, seventh at Charlotte before closing his rookie season last year with a sixth place finish in the L.A. Times 500 at Ontario, California. Lake Speed, car number 66, has brought out a most recent yellow light, yellow flag situation as uh, he lost control coming off of turn number two. We go down to the pit area. Here's Ned. Harry, Harry Gant is having some sort of problem. Bob Johnson, the crew chief, is under the hood on the car. They were about to bring him in just before this caution came out. But now they get to do their work on the caution. They haven't found out exactly what is wrong with the kit. They have an oil leak on it, and they're drying the oil off, trying to see where it is coming from. Now the hood goes down, apparently they have it fixed, so they'll send Gant back out, hopefully without losing a lap. Well, Harry Gant was certainly one of those up in competition in contention for the lead and a tough break for Gant. We'll see if the car performs better now. We were talking about Harry Gant before again as the field is given the one to go indication. You see Gant just scooting up the banking. The rest of the field is not all that far behind him. So all the work being done in the confined time area of one lap on this 1.017 mile racetrack. And Harry Gant, who we showed earlier as the leader, and who has had some fine runs here at Rockingham, has now been uh, relegated to the rear of that lead lap. And there you see Neil Bonnet, the number 21, Wood Brothers prepared, Purelator Thunderbird, Neil Bonnet, who of course is a name that has been around Winston Cup racing for many years, but has really been thrust into the limelight the last couple with his association with the Wood Brothers, taking over a ride vacated by David Pearson. And Neil Bonnet right there lined up double abreast again. Glenn Jarrett was inside of him and the rest of the field and part of the amazing crowd here at Rockingham and everybody always at every racetrack begins to stand as the field gets set for a restart. Let's watch them here as they come down in front of us to receive the green flag on the restart. It is Neil Bonnet in 21 in the lead at this point with Richard Petty, Bobby Allison, and Dale Earnhardt right behind. The green flag goes out. We're back to racing, and Bonnet charges into turn number one and opens up about a 10 car length advantage over Richard Petty in the number 43. Down the back stretch now. It's still Bonnet maintaining that lead into turn number three as we watch the cars back of uh, Richard Petty it is still Bobby Allison in third and Dale Earnhardt running in fourth position here they come to complete lap number 210 210 laps complete the average speed of the race so far is 115 and a half miles an hour Neil Bonnet leads at Rockingham Richard Petty in second Bobby Allison feeling the heat of Dale Earnhardt in third it is going to be fourth place for Earnhardt. Fifth spot now going to Cale Garbrough. David Pearson is right there in the Joel Halpern Enterprises car. He holds down sixth spot. Your leader again off the turn. Still showing the way. Neil Bonnet. Richard Petty closing in a flying wedge now for third spot between Bobby Allison, Cale Garbrough, and, Dang and Dale Earnhardt. But now they again go single file. Neil Bonnet, we talked about those who have competed in Indianapolis.
competing in this race here today, namely Johnny Rutherford and Tim Richmond. Neil Bonnet came to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway a few years ago and tried his best to work the car up to speed, could not do so, but he did pass his rookie test and on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the two and a half mile track at Indy. And uh, although he has never been in an Indy 500 mile race, showed all of us who uh, watched him that he could indeed do so. Now he's got all he can do with uh, the stock car under him, the Grand National stock car, as he makes the car dive into turn number three, trying to stave off the challenge of Richard Petty. Here is Neil Bonnet off of turn number four again, completing lap number 213. Petty in second, Bobby Allison is third. Running in fourth position is number two, Dale Earnhardt, and fifth is the 27 of Neil Yarborough, who has led most of the way here this afternoon. Neil Bonnet looking for the first time this year for a top five finish on a Winston Cup Grand National event. He finished out of the top five in the Winston Western 500 in Riverside, likewise in Daytona, likewise, of course, the Richmond event, uh, Richmond, uh, Virginia, where the Wood Brothers do not campaign a car. The only short track race that the Purelator car appears at is the Martinsville Speedway. Clay Earls immaculately prepared racing facility just down the road a piece from Stewart, Virginia, at the uh, hometown, the home base of the Wood Brothers. So Neil Bonnet looking for his first top five, if not his first victory of this 1981 Winston Cup. Grand National season. Your leader again. You see him right there, Neil Bonnet. Richard Petty right behind. Then the interval back to Bobby Allison and Kale Yarbrough. So that interval at this point is very, very slim as they uh, trail your lead automobiles again up the banking. Just 15 of a second is the uh, differential between your leadership. And there you have a battle for Kale Yarbrough going underneath Richard Petty. So, or at least underneath Bobby Allison, we should say. So coming off turn number four, Kale has a situation in hand. Well, we had an opportunity to talk with Neil Bonnet before the racing activity began. We asked him what his car will be doing today on the racetrack. Maybe we take a little bit of beat in qualifying. We can't put the gear in the car like the General Motors guys, but uh, in, on race day, they can't pull those gears either. So they kind of back down to our speed. And uh, in the past, it's always shown that during the race, the car always goes right to the front and is capable of leading the race and all. So uh, the Ford performs awful well here, and I'm looking forward to the race. Petty right behind him. Neil Bonnet, of course, from Hueytown, Alabama. He captured two races last year. He won the Talladega 500 and the 500-mile race at Pocono. He ran in 22 events last year and posted top 10 finishes in uh, five of them. So Neil Bonnet is showing the way here at the Carolina 500 this afternoon, but Richard Petty is not letting Neil get too far ahead as the cars go down the backstretch. And again, laps being put on some of the slower vehicles. Bonnet leading in Petty a second. Your cars now begin to have sorted themselves out. Of course, 219 laps into uh, the 500 miles here at this uh, shade better than a one mile uh, racetrack. But there's a good bit of the afternoon yet to go. Kale Yarbrough before, as we mentioned, had gotten around Bobby Allison. Uh, now tries to set sail to chase down your two leaders, Neil Bonnet and Richard Petty. And of course, as though one didn't need any further incentive to race with all the traffic you have to contend with out there, drivers oftentimes will say they would rather take the uh, cars in close quarters. It keeps you even that more alert. What happened in the late model sportsman event here yesterday? Dave Marcus was cruising, and he had a car of Harry Gant, although laps in arrears, immediately on his rear deck lid, and it kept Marcus all that more alert and helped him while the time away as he went on to uh, pick up the victory in a Coca-Cola 200 race here just one day ago. But right here, your leadership still for Neil Bond as he sweeps across the line to complete lap 220. We have talked about the weather on several occasions here this afternoon. The sun has been peeking out a couple of times, but for the most part, it's overcast here in Rockingham, North Carolina. And perhaps that is a very good thing for the drivers as during the late afternoon, the sun will get into a position they're driving right into it, coming down the main stretch here. And uh, I don't think we're going to have that problem this afternoon as it remains mostly cloudy. And of course, that will also help the racetrack and uh, mean that the track will not perhaps get as slick as it would if the sun were shining down brightly. Neil Bonnet continues to lead here, going down the back stretch, putting a lap on car number 52, Jimmy Means. We'll be back with more action from Rockingham, North Carolina, in a moment. Uh -huh.
still under yellow here at Rockingham, North Carolina. The Carolina 500, Bob Jenkins along with Eli Gold. They have been given the word that they will get the green flag next time around. The current standings, Cale Yarborough in the lead at car number 27. Daryl Waltrip at number 11 runs second. And Buddy Baker in uh, car number one runs in third position. 269 laps have been completed here at Rockingham. The average speed of the race at this point, 114.5 miles an hour. Dale Earnhardt is back out of the pit area now as he was caught in there when the signal came out for one to go. So Earnhardt, who is showing on the scoreboard as your fifth place runner, is again going to have to wend his way back up through traffic from the back of the pack where he is now situated behind Tim Richmond. Pace cars on the pits, and again, this fine crowd looking for a restart. More than 50,000 here this afternoon. Some of them are right now to watch the restart. 222 laps to go of this Carolina 500. Cale Yarborough is in the lead. Down the back stretch, showing in second position is the number 11, Daryl Walter. Bunny Baker runs in third place. Richard Petty is fourth, and Dale Earnhardt is running in fifth position. Retiring from the competition is Morgan Shepard in car number five. As the cars come off of turn number four, Shepard takes his car behind the wall. Earnhardt, of course, working his way up from the back of the pack. So now running behind Richard Petty is going to be Bobby Allison. And on Bobby's rear deck lid is going to be Neil Bonnet. So those cars now, again, taking advantage of the fact that Dale Earnhardt was caught in the pitch with a signal of one lap to go. And he tries to work his way through traffic. So up the bank, he compares number three and four. There are your front duo of Cale Yarbrough and Darrell Waltrip behind him. Earnhardt is making a move, but he's got much real estate to negotiate. We have had 10 different leaders this afternoon. That ties a record for the most lead changes or most leaders that have completed at least one lap shown as the leader in a Carolina 500-mile race. Right now, the leader is Cale Yarborough, who has led several laps here this afternoon. And right behind him is the green and white car, the Do Crew prepared automobile of Daryl Waltrip. Trip. Off of turn number four, the cars shoot high off of it, drift out toward the outside retaining wall, come down under the start finish line, and complete lap number 273. Yarborough and Waltrip 1 2. Running third is Baker, feeling the heat now from Richard Petty. Good battle for third place off the number two corner. It is Baker outlasting Richard Petty. So as we watch your leaders go up the banking of three and four, behind Yarborough and Waltrip, Baker is in third. Richard Petty fourth, Bobby Allison is fifth. It will be Neil Bonnet showing in sixth. Back to the line, Yarbrough the leader. $400,000 in prize money the last few years for Cale Yarbrough. Not exactly a uh, small amount of money, but a tough way to earn it. And As the driver's stamina here has to be tremendous with the number of laps that you have to compete in a 500 mile race here 492 on this very demanding race course where the drivers two really cars Yarborough and we Waltrip have battling for the lead and we have a problem up in turn number three and that involves Dale Earnhardt just takes right off for the wall again as you see the Wrangler machine come to rest nose towards the infield the safety inspector is right there to check with Earnhardt to make sure he is okay but again We've got caution displayed to the field ninth time this afternoon, and it will be the second time that Earnhardt has been responsible. There, the Wrangler machine again fires. You see some of the telltale damage from not only this episode here, but the one back earlier in the race on lap 125. Well, we'll take a replay of the accident involving Dale Earnhardt, this most recent one. The number two Earnhardt car getting into turn number three. And there you can see he was sideways going into the turn, backed it up into the outside retaining wall, slid along it for several feet, and then brought the car to the inside of the racetrack on the high banks. Dale Earnhardt, the second time this afternoon that he has been involved in an accident here. And it appears that they are changing the tires on that car, and he will go back out in competition. While we were away a few minutes ago, we had another accident involving Ricky Rudd in car number 88. His car was also sideways, this time in turn number two. Rudd drove the car up into the outside retaining wall at the uh, entrance to the back stretch, then brought the car to the inside. Ricky Rudd eliminated from competition in an accident earlier. For those who, of course, uh, follow Ricky Rudd, we talked about Ricky uh, doing some of his own campaigning for a while. He also spent some time with the Junie Dunn Libby team. And uh, last year, he picked up the services of Harry Hyde for just one race. That at the uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway for the October running of the National 500. 
and the qualified second. So Ricky Rudd this year takes over the drive vacated by Darrell Waltrip. And for those of you who are kind of figure filberts and statistically oriented, number 88, the car, and it was the 88th race of his career that Ricky Rudd took over the automobile. And there you see the problems that continue to beset the Dale Earnhardt, Doug Richard team crew car, and uh, it's tough break because Earnhardt has been such a competitive driver, picking up the uh, championship honors just one season ago, and uh, Earnhardt, of course, along with a good number of others, as we're still rather early in the season, looking for his first victory, and now, of course, you see the field coming towards the start-finish line, so Earnhardt will be going at least one lap down in the pit area right now. Well, we take a look some at some of the track records held here. Donnie Allison holds, holds a track record for qualifying at 142.648 miles an hour. That set last year, 25.666 seconds. So the pole speed this year was about 2.2 miles an hour slower than Allison's record setting qualifying run back in 1980. The safety car remains out on the racetrack as he leads the other cars down the backstretch. Right behind the safety car is the Harry Gant number 47. So we have completed 278 laps, 114 and a half miles an hour for an average, and we'll be back with more racing at Rockingham, North Carolina in a moment. More than 50,000 gathered here in Rockingham, North Carolina for the Carolina 500. They are about to rise to their feet to watch the restart here on lap number 282. The green is about to come out. The most recent yellow was for an accident involving Dale Earnhardt, a very interesting situation on pit road. It appears that after two incidents of wall contact, that car has been bent sufficiently, at least the Gas intake has been bent sufficiently. They cannot get gasoline into the car, and Dale Earnhardt is going to have to pull behind the wall and call it an afternoon. It's been a tough one for Dale Earnhardt. He now is out of the race, and the green flag comes back out. Being shown as your leader is Joe Milligan in car number 75. In second position, the number 11, Darrell Waltrip. In third, Neil Bonnet. Fourth is Bobby Allison, and fifth is Buddy Baker. There goes the move to the inside for Waltrip. Makes a bid for the lead on Randleman, North Carolina's Joe Milliken. And Waltrip going low on the racetrack. Has the leadership. Neil Bonnet comes along. Takes the free ride on Waltrip. So the first two cars in the train, those being Benny Parsons and Harry Dent, are on the tail end of the lead lap. Your leader is going to be the 11 do crew machine of Waltrip. He goes just a bit high in the turn. Bonnet had thoughts about going downstairs. Nothing there. Milliken is in third place. The green and white car of Darrell Waltrip is in the lead at this point as the cars head for turn number three. Waltrip formerly drove the number 88 Gatorade car, which we have was one also car. green and white, and a car spinning in turn number three. It is going to be Richard Childress, the Winston-Salem, North Carolina driver, spins off the banking. The leaders have taken the caution as they bring it across the start-finish line. So Waltrip in the number 11 hangs on, and Benny Parsons and Harry Gant do remain on the tail end of the lead lap. Here's Childress back on his uh, way again, but a tough spin for one of the major independent drivers on the circuit, Richard Childress. Childress spun the car low on the racetrack, did not make contact with the retaining wall, and I believe we can see that uh, there is some damage there to the rear of the car. I believe that some of the sheet metal is rubbing against the right rear tire. A replay of that incident now perhaps will show us what happened in the Childress accident here in turn number three. Well, that unavailable right now. But at any rate, Richard Childress spinning out in turn number three, bringing out the 10th caution light of the afternoon. And Darrell Waltrip in number 11 is shown as the leader. And of course, Benny Parsons and Harry Gant, those two cars that had been on the tail end of the lead lap, will take advantage of the break. There's Childress number three, sandwiched between Richard Petty and Cale Yarbrough. And there you see the slow spin begin to Richard Childress. Nose first, he stomps on the binders to try and Hang that car under control. He stays low, creeps up the banking, spins it around, and comes to rest out of harm's way. So Richard Childress seems to be okay. We have seen now 10 caution periods here in this uh, afternoon's event. We have had uh, 15 showing as the record. That, uh, or rather 11, is the record. 1977. So 
this event is just one caution period shy of the existing record. Richard Childress is on pit road right now. The field has been given the indication of one to go, Bob, next time they come by. Childress from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, is a 10-year veteran of NASCAR Grand National Competition. He ran in the, each of the 31 events during 1980, began racing in the NASCAR's Grand National East and Grand American Series, but joined the Winston Cup Tour full-time in 1973, posted three sixth place finishes in 1980 in Texas, at Riverside, and in Talladega. Down the back stretch, the procession is being led by Darrell Waltrip in number 11. The car there to the inside is the red and orange car driven by Kyle Petty. Here they come off of turn number four, and we will get the green flag. Darrell Waltrip will stand on the accelerator and resume the lead here this afternoon with Neil Bonnet right behind him. 205 laps to go here this afternoon in this 492 lap race. Waltrip is your leader with Neil Bonnet tucked in right behind him as the cars are in turn number two off of it down the back stretch. Your leader is working up the backing of turn number three. It's going to be Neil Bonnet trying to make a challenge now. It is going to be Waltrip the leader. Neil Bonnet going second. Joe Milliken is third. Then running further back is going to be fourth place. Bobby Allison, Buddy Baker is fifth. Back across the stripe. We have your leader showing it's going to be Still, Waltrip, Neil Bonnet right behind him. One car has come to a stop near the entrance to Pitt Road. And now we and have a car spinning up in turn number two. I believe that is Milliken in 75, is it not? It is Joe Milliken out of Randleman, North Carolina, with a gaggle of cars closing in behind him. He spins around at the same time, and you see he just continues along. Milliken had been showing as the leader earlier. And in addition, we were commenting about the fact that Lenny Pond's car has come to a stop near the entrance to Pitt Road, so we'll have a two-fold reason here for a caution flag. Well, the spin coming in turn number two and involving Joe Milliken, who was running in third position at the time. Milliken in the blue car number 75 getting sideways in the second turn and bringing the car down to the inside of the racetrack, bringing out our 10th caution flag of the afternoon. Beg your pardon, the 11th caution play of the afternoon. And uh, here is a replay of that spin involving Milliken. And look at the company he'll have quickly as Kyle Petty goes underneath. Milliken now looks, and he has got to see at this point 21 or 22 cars coming straight at him. And as Joe waits the car, an outstanding piece of driving by Joe Milliken. And of course, at the same time, your leaders raced back to the caution flag, and Neil Bonnet has picked up the leadership over your second place runner now, Darrell Waltrip. And Milliken, at the time of the spin, was running in third spot. And Milliken brings the car into the pit area for service. I'm sure he'll be able to resume the racing activity in just a moment, and we will resume the racing activity in a moment from Rockingham, North Carolina, and the Carolina 500. at Rockingham, North Carolina. Bob Jenkins along with Eli Gold. And the positions have been scrambled since we talked to you last. Now Cale Yarborough in number 27 is your leader with Neil Bonnet running in second position and Richard Petty in third. Running in fourth is Darrell Waltrip. Fifth is the number one car of Buddy Baker. And as we pick up the action here at Rockingham, what had been a wide, wide margin of an advantage for Cale Yarborough, you see, has now evaporated with 451 of 492 laps showing on the scoreboard. It is Yarbrough with company. Neil Bonnet is right there. The interval is gone. And Richard Petty is watching down the back straightaway past Cecil Gordon. Outside of Kyle Petty, Neil Bonnet wants a piece of the lead. 451 laps. Bonnet has to hold on to second place. Running up on the car of Kyle Petty. Richard Petty closing as well. We've got a dandy of a finish lined up here at Rockingham with Yarbrough, Bonnet, and Richard Petty in the chase. These two cars have been battling for the lead for the last several laps. And Cale Yarbrough has really shown his uh, supremacy as far as being able to stay in the lead. Nevertheless, we expect that Neil Bonnet will make a serious challenge for the lead here in the late stages of this race. The average speed of the race is 113 miles an hour at this point. We have been slowed by 13 yellow flags, several of them for accidents, but nobody has been injured. Also, we've got to contend with the fact that there should be a pit stop coming up for most of the leaders. I would think virtually all of them inside of the next 17 or 27 laps in that 10-lap range. 
we should see a final change. Now Yarbrough with Bonnet and Richard Petty through traffic as you see your laps remaining. It is Yarbrough in that single file choo-choo chain leading Neil Bonnet and Richard Petty. And at this point, the experimentation, everybody knows what they can do. They have pretty well made up their mind where they would like to make a move on a last lap should it come down to that shootout. And should things remain under green, a lot of the onus here this afternoon will shift from the drivers to the people who have been kind of faceless to this point, the pit crews. If they have to make that final change, will they go for gas only? Will they opt for gas and tires? Obviously, new tires here at Rockingham would give a car a decided edge. So a lot of strategy now as we wind our way down inside of 40 laps remaining. We mentioned strategy in the opening of the show, and certainly that has come into play here this afternoon. Richard Petty in the number 43 car has kind of hung back in the middle portion portions of the race, but now he's right up there in the thick of the race, running in third position. Here is Ned Jarrett in the pit area. We just made a survey of all the top runners, and most of the drivers that are running the General Motors car said it's going to be awfully close. David Smith, the group team on Hill Yarborough's car, said they will not have to stop, but they can go the rest of the way on gas. You heard Leonard Wood say that they would have to stop. So it's going to be very, very close here at the end. Whether they can make it on gas. Dale Inman of the Petty Crew said we're going to run it until we run out and take the gas off. Well, of course, if we get a yellow flag situation on the racetrack, there's no question that the cars will come in for assurance gasoline. However, if we continue to run under green as we have for the last few laps, it is going to be very interesting. Now you can see a little bit, a little bit of interval opening up between the first and second place cars. Yarborough with just a little bit of real estate between himself and Neil Bonnet. But right on Bonnet's tail is Richard Petty in the number 43. Those are your first three cars here with the leader, the 27 of Cale Yarborough, about to put a lap on the number 66 car to the right lane speed. What's that old saying? No, that's no glory. And if you're going to roll the dice, you might as well do it right here. A good payday on the line. And you've got drivers involved here who are veterans. And you've also got veteran pit crews. Really no newcomers here in the immediate decision making at the point. David F. running the Cale Yarborough operation. The Wood Brothers in charge of Neil Bonnet. And of course, Petty Enterprises. They have seen more and more races. We said for Richard Petty, this is Winston Cup race number 841 this afternoon. So they all know what they can and cannot do. Roll the dice and see what happens. Talking about pit stops, earlier this weekend here in Rockingham, there was a pit crew competition, and the winner of that race was the crew of Neil Bonnet. They were able to change two tires and fuel the car in just a little over 17 seconds. So that certainly might play a part in the final few laps of this race if Bonnet does have to come in for a pit stop and if Yarborough also has to stop for fuel. One, rather, 461 laps have been completed here out of 492, so almost uh, 30 laps remaining here as they come by to complete by 462. It will be 30 laps to go in this 500-miler at Rockingham. The average speed continues to escalate now to 113 and a half miles an hour. That on the average, five miles an hour quicker than this race last year, but still a good minute arrears to the 121 mile an hour plus set by Bobby Allison in this race back in 1979. Again, the pace has been lessened because of 14 caution periods as there's Bobby Allison threatening to go a lap down as Yarbrough does come in front of him. So Bobby Allison and the finale in its current structure for that Pontiac Le Mans now down a lap to your leader, Cale Yarbrough. Bobby Allison wanted so much to win this race here today because he feels he will be in decided disadvantage next race because the structure of the car will be changed. But he has not been in a competitive situation since the early going of this 500-mile race and now has gone a lap down with the leader. Good and battle. Richard Petty apparently has gone around Neil Bonnet. So Richard Petty now going into turn number one, dives to the inside, and goes around Neil Bonnet. So it's now Yarborough, Petty, and Bonnet with Richard setting his sights on the leader. And only 28 laps remaining in this one. It's phenomenal how these drivers can all be in a big, big bunch as they work their way close to 500 miles. Let's go to the pit area. Neil Bonnet has run out of gas, apparently. The Wood Brothers ready to bring him in right now. They thought he could go a little bit farther. He's going to reclimb the crossway, coming into the pits. He came in too fast. So Neil Bonnet is losing a lot of extra time here by locking the brakes. Coming in too fast, they put gas in and now send him on his way. But a much longer pit stop than what won them that pit stop competition here earlier. What a 
a situation here. More dramatics in Rockingham, North Carolina. Neil Bonnet in the number 21. You can see standing on the accelerator trying to get back there out on the racetrack in competition. But he lost precious time as he came into the pit area too hard. Spun the car at his pit area and lost precious seconds. And now it's a race between Yarborough and Richard Petty. And as a matter of fact, Yarborough is trying to barrel down on Neil Here Bonnet. comes Yarborough into the pit area. Yarborough is making a stop. The leader is coming into the pit area. Let's watch this pit stop here. As now Richard Petty jumps into the lead. Will Petty have to stop in the late stages of this race? We'll answer that in a few seconds. But right now, let's watch the refueling of the Cale Yarborough car. Fuel only, and he's out in a very hurry. Back down to Ned Jarrett. Well, Yarborough could be David Ilkow if they would not have to stop, and here he is already in. Dale Emmons said they were going to run their car, and it runs out of there. That's the car number 43 being driven by Richard Petty. Unbelievable racing here in Rockingham. Just phenomenal. 469 laps now showing of the 492. Gas only for Neil Bonnet. Gas only for Cale Yarbrough. Richard Petty at the point right now. Final race under the tutelage of Dale Inman. Would it be a victory here for Richard Petty? It's indeed a guess right now. Somebody is going to take a chance. Well, Richard Petty now in the lead in the number 43 car, but will he have to stop for fuel? That is the question we'll answer in just a few minutes. Petty brings the car off of the second turn down the back stretch. Richard Petty is your leader here at the conclusion of 470 laps. We've only got 22 to go. Tom luck for Neil Bonnet in the number 21 car as he came in too fast for the pit stop. And also some rather tough luck for Cale Yarborough. He had to stop also. It certainly will be tough luck if Richard Petty does not have to make a final stop. Also into the pit area at this time is Bobby Allison in the 28 who got lapped just a few seconds ago. Nobody feels worse though than Neil Bonnet. He would hate to have that situation explode as it did to him on pit road. Right now Richard Petty as you see just tooling along right now. You saw Neil Bonnet directly in front of Richard Petty. So Neil is at this point on the tail end of that lap and Richard trying to just keep Neil Bonnet in his sights. 472 down. That makes it 20 laps remaining here in Buckingham this afternoon. Richard Petty is six times. Carolina 500 winner and a 10-time Rockingham winner. There are the standings as we wind our way down. Daryl Waltrip has moved back into second position. Cale Yarborough is in third. Bonnet maintains fourth position. And Buddy Baker in the number one is running fifth right now. Petty out in turn number one apparently is about to put a lap on the fifth place car because that is Buddy Baker in number one. Petty moves to the outside of Baker down the backstretch and does go around the fifth place car unofficially. Buddy Baker is a lap down in fifth position, so now there are only four cars on the lead lap. Petty, Waltrip, Yarborough, and Bonnet. Interval between first place Petty and second place Darrell Waltrip is better than 13 and a half seconds right now. As you can see, Richard Petty, although he holds many, many, many records, is second on the super speedway win list. This is considered a super speedway because of the high banking. It isn't nearly as long as some of the other super speedways in Daytona, two and a half miles. This a little over one mile. Nevertheless, it's considered a super speedway. And Richard Petty appears well on his way to chalking up another win on the super speedways of the South United States. Well, Richard Petty just a couple of short weeks off his seventh Daytona 500 victory. And you think that is impressive. Nobody else has won it more than two times. So Petty has won seven, a seven-time Winston Cup Grand National Champion. And Richard Petty now with the scoreboard showing 476. And we see Waltrip better than 13 seconds in arrears as we had the clock on him just a couple of laps ago. And the fifth-place car, Buddy Baker, pulls into the pit area. What we need right now is a yellow flag situation. Certainly nothing that involves an accident, but perhaps a piece of debris on the racetrack that would bring out the yellow and allow these cars to punch up. Although if we don't get a yellow, it looks like that Richard is going to be well on his way to victory here this afternoon. At this point, of course, so when somebody has gone this far in the race and has earned this kind of a situation, you hate to see anything of any kind come between himself and uh, a victory that has certainly been hard earned. That petty pit area, everybody just standing and watching those blue and red clad figures all looking on. Among those in the pit area, our man, Ned Jarrett.
are standing by in the pit, in, pit, pit area. We've asked Dale them to group if they're going to stop. He says, I don't know. We're still going to run out of gas. They are ready just in case he has to post the end of the pit, but they're going to try to run him all the way. Well, this is going to be an interesting situation. Does Richard Petty have enough fuel to last the race? They're going to run it till the car runs out and take a chance that it'll be the complete 500 mile distance. We've completed 478. We have now 479. We have 13 laps to go. So Richard Petty now with the lead will try to stretch those final 13 miles out of that car and come home a winner here this afternoon. We've got a clock on Richard Petty as we look at the STP pitch, the Petty Enterprise pit area. Everybody looking on, they're charting gasoline, checking lap time. We are doing lap times as well right here as Petty flashes by that lap in a flat 27 seconds. 27 seconds, so it is about a second behind the pole speed set by Cale Yarbrough. And when you have a 13 second lead over second place, maybe back off the wick just a little bit to try and conserve some fuel if there's a question. There's second place runner Walter. And the car immediately ahead of the leader, Richard Petty, is the 21 driven by Neil Bonnet. There it is. Petty about to put a lap on the fourth place car here this afternoon, Neil Bonnet who challenged for the lead most of the afternoon and ran into some terrible luck at the last pit stop when he came in too hot, had to get on the brakes, partially spun the car in his pit area. That cost him precious time and dropped it back to fourth position. He's about to go a lap down to the leader, Richard Petty. Now a little bit of sunshine peeks through this North Carolina sky and presents a serious challenge to the drivers as they head for turn number one. It's shining right in their face. You saw Dale Inman looking on so very pensively in his final race as his final race with the Winston Cup. Richard Petty Enterprises moves on to join the Austrian crew. Some impressive statistics. Try these. Richard Petty, 193 career wins, 49 on the super speedways, that is second on the all-time list. He has won this race six times. He has run at this track and won ten times. So the man knows his way around. Speedway, and right now inside of ten laps, nine now remaining. And it appears that we're not going to have a nose to tail victory here, at least at this point. Waltrip there in car number 11 in second place is about a half a lap behind. And then there is a, quite a bit of distance between the second and third place car, the third place car driven by Cale Yarborough. As Richard Petty moves off of the second turn, he puts another lap on the number 99 Uno driven by Tim Richmond. The third place car is Cale Yarborough, number 27. Kale led many, many laps in this race, but uh, has now settled back into third position and does not appear to be in a challenging position at this point. I would dare say nail biting has long since finished in the petty pitch. They are probably now munching on knuckles as people are looking on again, charting gasoline, charting Richard Petty's progress. The scoreboard shows 485 as Buddy Baker is left again, now going two laps in arrears as Baker in the number five position, now car number one. There's the fourth place car of Neil Bonnet, the one we talked about just a few minutes ago. Neil has driven a tremendous race here this afternoon, has been very competitive on the speedway. Unfortunately, it was the pit bug that bit him to cause him to lose precious time in the pit area just a few laps ago. Neil Bonnet in fourth place in car number 21. Still, the leader continues to be Richard Petty as he moves the car to the high side of the racetrack in turn number four. Now brings it down to the inside and moves past us here on the front stretch. Richard Petty completes lap number 487. We have five more laps to go in the, Cal the Carolina 500 at Rockingham. Again, the clock on Richard Petty as we stop at midway down the back shoot. He is still turning the track at an exact 27 seconds, so he has not waited at all from the timing we had for Richard about nine or ten laps ago. Richard Petty started this race in third position, qualifying at an average speed of 140.040. He started third, is in the lead at this point. Meanwhile, the crew chief, Dale Inman, continues to anxiously wait to see whether or not that car has enough gas to go the distance. You can see him stop and step down from his higher perch, and perhaps Petty is coming into the pits. The crew is readying itself. Let's see if he does as he comes off turn number four. Yes, Richard Petty, the leader, is coming in for a fuel stop. It'll be a very short stop. They'll get just enough gasoline in that car for it to Petty 
if the car died, he had to coast into the pit, but they quickly got it restarted. Now it's going down pit road, not running a full speed, though. The car won't pick up. Now he gets it to going again. Maybe he's going to be okay. It was a very slow start from the stop in the pit area of Richard Petty. You can see him move that car up the bank. He took 5.3 seconds on the pit stop, but it was a precious 5.3 seconds. And now the number 11 of Darrell Waltrip has moved into the lead here at the Carolina 500, completing lap number 489. Waltrip, never a winner here at Rockingham. You saw Richard Petty, as Ben said, couldn't get himself going. Slow coming out of the pits. He now works. Petty does in a turn number one and two, but there is the leader in the Duke Crew car. Darrell Waltrip, Franklin, Tennessee, under the watchful eye of Junior Johnson. And let me tell you, if Waltrip is able to pull this one out, it is going to be quite the afternoon. White flag here for Waltrip. His final lap around this one-mile track in Rockingham. Let's follow it around. Darrell Waltrip started this race in fourth position beside Richard Petty in the second row. Unfortunately, did have to stop for fuel in the late stages of the race, giving the lead to Darrell Waltrip. And Waltrip now is about to win. There is Richard Petty, who is running in third position. It's been the lucky weeks. Last week, winning at Richmond and right here at Rockingham. Darrell Waltrip wins again, makes it two in a row, winning after Richmond last weekend and again here this afternoon. Tremendously exciting finish to this 500-mile race at Rockingham with Darrell Waltrip, who played it cool and laid back in second position, watching Richard Petty run out of fuel, and then when Petty moved into the pit area, Waltrip named went into the lead and maintained it for the final three laps to pull off the victory here this afternoon. Unofficially finishing in second position, the number 27 of Cale Yarborough. Finishing in third position was Richard Petty in car number 43. What a day of racing after 500 miles, a tremendous finish. Why is anybody surprised? I don't know. This kind of racing goes on week after week on the Winston Cup Tour. You see Waltrip waving and accepting the accolades of the Duke crew. Everybody piling in and piling on top of that car, immaculately prepared by Junior Johnson. And there is going to be some kind of celebration tonight for those people. Well, it's a disappointing afternoon for several people, including Neil Bonnet in 21, who came into the pit area and partially spun. A disappointing afternoon for the King, Richard Petty, a number 43, who was well out into the lead by almost a half a lap but had to come into the pit area in the final three laps for fuel, giving up the lead to Waltrip. Petty finishes in third position. What a day. One has got to feel for Dale Inman and that Petty Enterprise operation after 23 years. One of the most successful marriages on the stock car circuit will come to an end as Inman joins the Osterland Enterprises team. And there's the breakdown of the Richard Petty pit right now as they begin to break down the equipment, put things back, and move on to the next event in Atlanta. What a day. Meanwhile, celebration as Darrell Waltrip has, in addition to all that horsepower, he has about 14 people power right now pushing that car towards victory lane. The crew dressed in, dressed in green and white pushes the car to the victory lane celebration. That is the trophy that Darrell Waltrip will be receiving here this afternoon for winning the Carolina 500. Darrell Waltrip in car number 11 has pulled off the victory here this afternoon. Unofficially, the average speed of the race was 114.4 miles an hour, slowed by some 13 yellow flags. The Waltrip car is in the victory lane. We'll be back for the celebration in just a moment. The very dejected Richard Petty has exited his race car now. Unfortunately, he lost this race because of a fuel problem. He had to settle for third position. There you can see the King walking very de dejectedly back in the pit area. Petty finishes in third position. Cale Yarborough winds up in second. And the winner, Dale Wal Darrell Waltrip, down in victory lane. So is Ned Jarrett. And he acts a little bit tired, are you, Darrell? I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> Are you surprised to see yourself in Victor Lane? I didn't know we were leading the race, and, and uh, Junior came on the radio and said, run like hell, you know, and I thought he meant maybe for a spot or something, you know. Had no idea it was for the win. I owe it everything to the whole the crew. They did everything. It's unbelievable. You had to be running on fumes there at the end. 
it was sputtering, you know, and I thought it was just maybe a broken valve spring or something. Didn't even think about gas. Well, two in a row. You won last week at Richmond, and then here at Rockingham, you got it going now with this new crew. Uh, like I said, Ned, I owe it all to the Mountain Dew pit crew and, and Junior Johnson. They just did a fabulous job for me. I can't say enough for them. Well, here's a fellow that is surprised and happy and all the things that goes along with being in Victor Circle at a NASCAR race. Can you believe that? He won the race and didn't know that he was in the lead. Maybe the good psychology for Junior Johnson. Don't tell the driver all that goes on. Just let him keep running. Somehow, you got to think that Darrell Waltrip is uh, just living that good life or something because things have really fallen so well for him of late. Uh, the fine show in Richmond last week. And here today, a survival of the fittest. And it's Darrell Waltrip, as you see, the victory and uh, celebration. And what a day for the Duke crew. Well, a cold cloth being applied to the forehead of Darrell Waltrip as he celebrates the victory here at Rockingham, North Carolina. The unofficial rundown shows that Waltrip was the winner, of course, with Cale Yarborough finishing second. Richard Petty finishes third. Fourth place went to the number 21 of Neil Bonnet and finishing fifth unofficially, one lap down was Buddy Baker. Once again, we go down to Ned Jarrett. Well, with a big smile on her face is Darrell's wife, Stevie. Were you surprised to see him in victory lane? Well, uh, yes and no. I knew that, that the car and the, the crew were capable of winning. I just didn't know if we had enough gas to go. And uh, Junior and, and Harold and I kept talking about gas mileage and where we are going to be able to. And, and uh, three laps before the end of the race, the car started missing. And really, he ran out of gas with three laps to go. So we were real, just real fortunate to finish the race. Stevie, what do you do in a time like that? I know that you work in the pits and keep track of laps and all like that, but do you sit there with your fingers crossed and all the other good wishes? I really do. I get really tense with about 10 laps to go when there's a, a good possibility that we could win. Now, this has to make Darrell a lot easier to live with. <laughs> He's been easy to live with since we uh, started living with Junior Johnson. <laughs> okay, there's another big smile that helps to tell the story here in Victor Lane. Well, she was tense. All of the fans here, I'm sure, were tense. We were tense in the broadcast booth as we watched the final few laps of this race develop with Petty hitting, heading to the pits with two laps to go, relinquishing the lead to Darrell Waltrip, who went on to win. Back with more at Rockingham in just a moment. The final results of the Carolina 500. The winner, Darrell Waltrip, finishing in second position, Cale Yarborough, and third was Richard Petty. Well, Eli, we have seen a lot of close racing on our ESPN telecast of auto racing last year, but this one was not necessarily a close race, but the dramatics were unbelievable. I think somebody is going to have to dig down to the grab bag and find some new adjectives because uh, great, unbelievable, uh, remarkable, all of those may come up just a bit short here today. You're talking about some of the top teams, the top cars, the outstanding drivers in Winston Cup racing. And again today, I guess the, the logo and the claim of the most competitive brand of racing anywhere has really been upheld by NASCAR. The finish was just, it was remarkable, it was, due to the lack of a better term, when it comes down after 500 miles to a situation of gasoline strategy, one pit crew says one thing, another says another, Neil Bonnet having trouble in the pitch there, uh, it all comes down to the final couple of laps, so what a day it was. Celebrations here in front of a crowd of better than 50,000 on hand, a totally sold out Rockingham Speedway, what a day. The word strategy keeps popping up. We mentioned that in the open. We mentioned it several times during the running of the race. We have to mention it again here in the close. You talk about strategy. It worked for the Petties in Daytona when they, through the heat of the battle, decided to take just a gasoline and no tires, and it works here again this afternoon. Some crew chiefs, as you heard Ned Jarrett report, said, yes, we have to make a stop for gasoline. Others says, no, we'll try and make the luck and try and roll the dice and go with it. When all came down, push to shove, everybody came in to make that stop. But when all was said and done, it was that big victory for Darrell Waltrip. He professed to be totally amazed himself at finding himself being ushered towards victory lane. And if that was the case, it makes for quite a topping on the cake for Waltrip here this afternoon. We saw guardrails torn away here today. We saw several cars damaged badly. No driver injuries, a great credit to the NASCAR safety regulation. Of course, safety is a major factor. We saw in the recent days some of the most outstanding 
driver reaction to problem situations. Some cars that go in every which direction in Daytona. Problems in Richmond. And again here 14 times, if I'm not mistaken, this afternoon. Everybody gets up, dusts themselves off after a wild ride and goes on back to their business. So, again, a tribute to the safety factors built into these Winston Cup Grand National cars. But what can you say about Darrell Waltrip? It is seemingly that marriage made in heaven. People talked about the All-America team, whatever. Junior Johnson and Waltrip now winning two races in a row last week in Richmond and here again this afternoon. Again, the finish, Darrell Waltrip, your winner. Cale Yarborough second, the very dejected pit crew of Richard Petty finishes in third position after Petty appeared to be well on his way to victory but had to stop for gasoline. We have several more Grand National races on our ESPN schedule this year. We hope you'll be back for each and every one of those. For now, Bob Jenkins for Eli Gold. So long, everyone, from Rockingham, North Carolina. This has been a presentation of ESPN, your total sports network.